This is the last and crucial field season for the Neem Ice Core drilling project in northwestern Greenland. The researchers will drill ice cores all the way through the two and a half kilometer thick ice sheet. The international project, with participants from 14 countries, is led by the Danish Center for Ice and Climate at the Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen. Deep down, they are hoping to get ice from the Earth's warm past, when the climate was several degrees warmer than today. We are facing global warming, and knowledge of the climate of the past can help us to predict future climate changes. So, you better come in here. In Kanga Lusuak, a new team of researchers is preparing to travel to the Neem camp. The new ones heading out onto the ice need to be equipped with polar gear. Once the new team has been given clothes, thick overalls, big boots with centimeter thick felt lining and arctic sleeping bags they are ready to go from the warm summer weather in Kangalusuak to the cold of the ice sheet where they need to be able to work in minus 20 to 25 degrees celsius The Hercules airplane that is to fly them into the Neem camp arrives in Kangalusuak. They are from the US Air Force and are based in New York. They have a shipment of food supplies from the US for the camp. The boxes need to be driven immediately to a nearby warehouse where the researchers are preparing insulated boxes for the food. Then the food arrives from the airport and now it must be repackaged and distributed in the insulated boxes according to whether they are dry goods, fresh fruit and vegetables or frozen goods. The camp's new cook, René Vieu, is pleasantly surprised at what he sees. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, fresh Soon the cargo is ready. The Hercules is ready. We have clear blue skies. And for once, Minus the weather is clear. Both in Kangalusuag and on the ice at the Neem camp. The field leader in the Neem camp also functions as an air traffic controller. Okay, temps are now minus eight degrees centigrade. The Hercules is a cargo plane, so the comfort of the passenger is limited and the noise is deafening. But they are used to it and settle in quickly. After two hours, the Hercules plane approaches the camp at 77 degrees north. From the control tower, Jörn Peder Stephenson can now see the plane arriving. And from the plane, you can spot the waiting crowd of people who are going home having finished work in the field. There is a happy reunion and time for a little chat before the plane has to depart again. Before long, the plane is in the air again. And the new crew will now continue the hunt for the climate of the past. Everything is in motion. The drilling continues steadily towards the exciting Eemian ice. And the new cook, René Vieux, goes exploring in the treasure chests of food. 
containing several surprises. Da jeg ankom her for et par dage siden, så så jeg til min glæde, at jeg havde en fryser som en til den derhjemme. Men det var det ikke. Det er en varme stue. <laughs> nu vil jeg vise den rigtige fryser. Ja, her har vi så min fryser. Hvad er den største kummefryser? Og her var vi så vores frostfarer. Here, there are enough supplies for 50 people for several months. He is at home in the kitchen, and it is not long before there are delicious dishes on the table for the many hard-working people in the field. After dinner, there may be time for a game of table soccer or to check mail. But the workday is not over, and soon they have to go down to the drill hall again and continue the work. Seifors Jonsson has already started with the next drilling. Og nu er vi nået ned til 2 meter, som I kan se på skærmen her. Godt og vel 2 meter. Seifors Jonsson is the grand old man. He has been involved with ice core research for more than 40 years, from the very beginning. And he helped design the drill and develop the technique over the years. Men, men handlingen, den er sådan lidt, den er stiget lidt. Desværre. Vi må gøre noget ved det, Trevor. The drilling is going well, and they get a core of 3.43 meters. Der var den. Se nu. Nu faldt den lidt til i de 5 ampere, 5,6-7 ampere, fordi nu, nu, er, nu er kernerøret fyldt med, som sagt, en flot kern fra en til en. The inner barrel with the ice core is pulled out of the drill. And then the ice core is pushed out of the barrel. But is this ice from the ice age? Or have we now, after three years, finally reached down to the warm Eemian period? Upon inspection, the experienced ice core researcher Seifors Jonsson believes that he can tell for certain when the ice is from. Når vi kigger på den, så kan vi se, at den er jo, at den er jo helt klar, man kan se igen den, ikke? Og det betyder så, at det er fra en varm tid. Hvis det havde været fra en istid, så havde vi kunnet se nogle, nogle, nogle mærkelige mørke, kan man sige, det, det, det vi kalder cloudy bands, ikke sandt? Og der er ingen af dem, så det er helt sikkert is fra en tid. Det er jeg i hvert fald meget sikker på. The analysis of the ice cores takes a long time to do, but here is a method that can give a quick hint. We put the ice core here in between, and then the top pedal is sliding over it, and so it's measuring the um, capacity and the connectivity uh, of the core in two millimeter steps. Now that the whole core is scanned, we can look at the results. And what we see here, the connectivity, that everything is very flat. So it could well be that we, have, we are now at the beginning of the Emian. The next ice core is ready to be brought up from the depths. While the drill is on its way down into the depths of the ice, Trevor Pop is crawling down into the six and a half meter deep shaft. It looks so easy as he effortlessly makes his way downwards. But the steps are steep, narrow and icy, and he is one of the few who dare. He removes a lot of sludge that accumulates from the drilling. In the sludge is drilling fluid, which can be recycled. Then we head back up the steep, slippery steps, this time with the full and heavy bucket. In field, you are not just a researcher, you are also involved in all of the practical work. I spent eight years doing my PhD, and I'm shoveling crap on a Sunday morning with a hangover. <laughs> The ice core comes up to the surface. It has maximum length. 
But is it from the Ice Age? Or is it perhaps ice from the previous warm period, the Eemian? Also, den is den er, er fuldstændig klar. Og når vi knækker kernen, så er den temmelig hård og svær, svær knække. Så jeg vil have det, at det er stadigvæk et rigtig emis, det her. Thomas Lepler measures the electrical resistance in the core. This can show whether the ice is from a warm period. But it is only a quick clue. So we see a very stable signal, but we see a slow decrease here. If we are in the moment, we are in a very warm phase, because it started already uh, two days ago and everything was stable and high. And now we have here a small decrease, which could mean it's getting very slightly cooler. So even the Emian, we don't expect that it's totally stable. So it will also have a bit warmer and a bit cooler phases. And we are pretty sure that we are in the Emian. In the chemistry laboratory, they measure the chemical composition of the ice. First, the ice is prepared for analysis. Nerily Abram takes the sections of ice to be analyzed. She cleans it so you do not get false information. This must also be measured so that you know exactly how much ice there is and then she places it in a holder. The holder with the ice core hung up and melted slowly from below on a hot plate. The water that is coming from the melt head outside gets pumped into the lab and then it is separated from the air that is also in the ice. Then some of the water gets distributed onto our channels and what we try to analyze with the continuous flow analysis system is basically the impurities in the ice that um, give us information about, generally speaking, the atmospheric circulation and then each of the component gives you some more detailed insight into a component of the climate in the past. So here on the screen you see what we're measuring with our system. Uh, on top it's the conductivity that is plotted, then sodium, calcium, dust, ammonium, nitrate, the acidity and in warmer periods uh, hydrogen peroxide and this all gives you detailed information about the past climate and the atmospheric circulation. The researchers can deduce incredibly detailed knowledge about the climate of the past from the analysis of ice cores, also from the sea of the past. What we see here are the um, ions coming off um, the ice. So the first peak that we see is nitrate, and then as we move in here we get more of the marine species. And these are things that are actually produced at the ice edge by the algae and then transported all the way up to the inland ice and trapped within the ice core. And this is what we see coming out here. So in a moment we'll have a large peak and that'll be in chloride, which is a very big marine species. Um, and then the second large peak that we have is sulfate. And sulfate has a marine origin, but it also is linked to volcanic eruptions. So when we have the big um, volcanic um, events, you see a very large spike in sulfate, which we can pick up in our chromatograms here. So this is a very important way that we can then reconstruct how past sea ice extent has changed from the current warm period, the Holocene, into the glacial and then into the Eemian ice that we're approaching. The location of the Neem camp in the desolate, rugged landscape provides unique opportunities for distraction in the meagre spare time. Kite skiing is on the hit list when there is weather and wind for it. The smooth runway is perfect for kite skiing. There are also a great many who brought their skis and go cross country. In the laboratory hall, Joseph Kipfstuhl makes a thin section from a slice of ice. The slice of ice is planed with a microtome knife until it is only fractions of a millimeter thick. It must be done very precisely and very carefully so as to not destroy it. He wants to study the crystal structure of the ice sheet in order to understand how the kilometer thick ice sheet is built up and how it flows. When the slice of ice is cut ultra thin, you can examine it through glass with polarizing filters. When we look at the crystals, we see the crystal size, uh, the crystal shape, 
and the crystal orientation. And uh, these parameters allow us to reconstruct or to conclude about the flow properties of the ice. Small crystals are ice from a cold climate like the Ice Age. And the larger the crystals are, the warmer the climate. By analyzing the colors, we can see what their orientation is in the ice sheet. And this can tell us something about how the ice sheet flows. Oh, that's a wind. In the drill hall, Hans Christian Steinlarsen is the drill master. Okay. Yeah. Seyfors Jonsson actually has the day off, but it is simply too exciting. So he has to be there and follow along. They are focused on the work. So, that's the oven. Maximum length. The drilling has now reached a depth of two kilometers and four hundred meters. So, boring as the oven. Then we go back for Franz Hollo. It is not the deepest drilling through the ice sheet on Greenland, but it is approaching the oldest Greenland ice ever drilled. They are heading towards an unexplored past. It is a very exciting time. All our hopes and expectations, all our works and endeavors over the past four years are focusing on the following four weeks of drilling. That's when we really will get the ice that will tell us whether we were right or we were wrong in drilling at that location. And that's a very exciting uh, time in camp indeed, and, and every, you can feel it in the spirit of everybody up there. The warehouse with ice cores is almost completely filled, and they have to decide whether the ice cores should be sent with the next flight. Heavy boxes of ice cores, weighing up to 60 kilos, need to be dragged through the narrow passages. But they get out of having to carry them all the way up from the underground halls. They can use a lift to hoist the heavy boxes up to the surface, where another team takes them. Then they are driven to the runway, where they are packed on a large pallet. The boxes with the valuable ice cores are fastened securely and safely for air transport. Then the load is weighed. 1,681 kilos. The plane arrives and the cargo is ready to immediately be driven aboard. When there are ice cores on board, you cannot turn the heat on, so it is ice cold in the cabin, all the way to Kangalusuak. From here, the ice cores are sent on to the University of Copenhagen, where they are stored in a large basement freezer. The next team of researchers arriving at Neem will work to complete the drilling all the way down to bedrock through the deep ice. Will it succeed? Will they get new knowledge about the climate of the past? <laughs>